let us get to our final featured review, featured film for this week. That is a movie called Sam and Kate again. Dustin Hoffman. We, I haven't seen Dustin Hoffman in a movie for for a while. I'm sure maybe the Mayor Mayorowitz Diaries or Stories, whatever that was, maybe several years back. He was very good in that. He's good in this one. Sissy Spacek is also in this. They play respective. Uh, they're not a married couple. And this is one of these movies where you're, it's more centered on their kids. So Sissy Spacek's child is played by Skylar Fisk, her real life daughter, and Skylar Fisk's character Kate. She's been caregiving with for her mom for quite quite a long time. Her mom has a problem. She's her mom. Well, I don't even know, Bruce. Should we say what her mom's problem is, or is that giving up too much away? I wouldn't. I wouldn't. I can't, yeah, okay. I, even though there's clues, it doesn't really fully come out till later in the movie. All right. And let's, okay, I can say this. Dustin Hoffman plays an elderly man who's a frail health. He doesn't really have a good heart. He eats meat. He likes smoking cigars. He likes drinking now and again. Who doesn't? But he's elderly and he needs to actually, he needs a pacemaker. You know, he's not in the best of health. Let's just say that. And so he's being taken care of by his son, Sam, played by Jake Hoffman, the real life, real life son of Dustin Hoffman. That is the premise of the movie. Sam spies Kate one day at a local bookshop in their store, goes in, he starts trying to hit on her in his very ineffectual, self-effacing way, which is probably the kind of way I would do it with my horrible humor. I relate to Sam's humor, deadpan dry wit humor. But unfortunately, there's a failure to launch there. He doesn't immediately get into the good graces of Kate. She actually rebuffs him in a kind kind manner. In the, so it's sort of a meet. They're cute, but nothing's going to happen. But as the events unfold, Sam and Kate get to know each other vis-a-vis their parents getting to know each other. That is a premise of this movie who, that's written and directed by Darren Lee Gallo. And let me tell you something. I just wanted to see this movie just because we're thinking Sissy Spacek from Carrie. Sissy Spacek from Coal Miner's Daughter. Sissy Spacek from Badlands. Dustin Hoffman from, I was going to say Outbreak. I loved Outbreak too. Wolfgang Peterson, rest in peace. Tootsie, which I saw in 1982. Straight time, love him in that. The Graduate, who doesn't? So two legendary actors. That's the only reason why I wanted to see Sam and Kate and to fill up our weekly movie schedule. My goodness, was I surprised that Sam and Kate ended up being the best movie of the week. Uh, Actually, I wasn't too surprised because Bruce warned me about this a couple of weeks ago and Eric Holmes is laughing because he's going to start one star banging Sam and Kate in a few seconds from now. <laughs> Before Let's uh, take a steer, a pole position, steer away from Eric Holmes. And you know what? I'm going to go right into Eric Holmes right now with Sam and Kate. One star banger for this movie for you? Or what do you think? No, no, it's not one star banger. I'm just a complete idiot. I thought Jake Hoffman and Dustin Hoffman's chemistry in this was really good together. <laughs> and uh, I was looking up Jake Hoffman. I was like, oh, wow, him and Dustin Hoffman's been in a lot of movies together. And you said Jake Hoffman, son of Dustin Hoffman. I'm like, right. I'm an idiot. <laughs> Did you know Skylar Fisk was the daughter of Sissy Spacek? Wilson Fisk, Kingpin from Marvel. Yes. Oh, wait, what? What was that? <laughs> <laughs> but you didn't know Skylar Fisk was the daughter of Sissy Spacek? I did not You're know like- that either. Okay, interesting. Oh, wow. Okay. That, yeah, that as a That's whole, a premise you know. of Sam and Kate. That's a nice little... I, I guess like Hoffman's like such a common name. Like Philip Seymour Hoffman, I don't think was right. related to Dustin Hoffman. So Sure. And that and Jake Hoffman looks so much like Jeremy Johns from YouTube that like I couldn't get Jeremy Johns out of my head the entire oh, time. Good, good point. And Skylar Fisk is does it's not Skylar yeah. Spacek or Sky. Yeah, you're you're not gonna know okay. that. You know. Yeah, that's a that, that's that, the brand. That's kind of that's kind of cool. That's kind of like uh, the Long yes. Riders. Like uh, they got yes. all the brothers mm-hmm. playing brothers in it. The um, Carradines. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. The but th- this started off as kind of like a cute. Uh, rom com, uh, you know the 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 parents falling in love with, with each other and the kids falling in love with each other, and then kind of stuff of their past starts coming out, and that's what kind of tests both relationships. And it starts off cute, gets kind of dramatic and sad, and ends on pretty pretty decent high note. I would say Henry Thomas plays a good stoner in this, and if you're watching it, day to the end of the credits, there's a little tag at the end with him on there. It was kind of funny. It started off kind of being like one of those indie porn movies that i hate like it kind of got into something that i was kind of rolling with didn't know that this was gonna like you said that this is the best one of the week so far but what a week it's been <laughs> oh yeah paradise city with one of the best oh movies. no no this is not the best one of the week we haven't talked about that yet but oh. th- 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 but th- this one's definitely a recommend probably around the three star area still probably three and a half but it's still it, it's still a recommend for sure this movie is checks in it's rated r checks in at, at 110 minutes bruce perky was the 110 minutes well earned could it have been cut shorter 
your overall thoughts on this movie? No, I think it was well earned. I, I really enjoyed this. And I was surprised by how much I would enjoyed this. I thought at first I thought, oh, this is just paint by numbers, dad, mom movie kind of movie, you know, those well, basically just like what Eric said, you know, where it's just one of those movies where it's like they're gonna meet cute and then there's gonna be kind of a meet cute between their parents, and there's gonna be kind of this idea that they're both gonna kind of fall in love and and let's just say that the paths of both sets of relationships doesn't go quite where you think it's going to go. And I really appreciated that. And I appreciated how it, it went for more subtle conclusions to the different relationships than it it would normally go in this kind of movie. I think it, it let it be much more, I don't know, I guess subtle is the best word for it. It just didn't go for the big emotional beats that you would think. And for me, it actually had more of an emotional impact because of that. I, I really, and I really liked the characters too. And I know we talked about the obvious chemistry because of you know, parents and, and kids, you know, acting together, but they all do a great job. And there's a song at one point in the movie that uh, really got me and the, the way it was, where it was placed and how it was placed and when it happened was, I thought, just perfect. And I know that was there for that reason. I just ended up loving these characters. And this is one of those kind of movies. If you really kind of fall in love with the characters, you'll be along for the ride and it will be a very, very satisfying, I think, experience. If you're not really into them as much, then it might be just an okay experience. But I kind of doubt anyone's going to hate this movie unless you just are an inhuman monster. I don't know. Greg, maybe you didn't like this movie. Yeah, I am an inhuman <laughs> monster. I, um, am. I am. But I, I really like this, and I started comparing it to, to Driveways. I don't think it's quite the same as Driveways as far as the way it hits. If you love Driveways, I think you'll love this movie, and I think you'll love them for similar reason. That is that you get some really lived-in characters at, that you're allowed to really just sit with and experience a portion of their lives and allow yourself to get involved in and i think it's i think it's a really good movie yeah it felt like a very subtle film too in a, in a way because you're talking about just the way the story was told jake yeah. hoffman and skylar fist they felt like i don't know who they are as people they felt like they were playing they're they playing it themselves they, they they felt like normal people in a small town small city trying to get along with their lives and i thought the ending was fantastic the way and and very well done and it actually punched up the whole narrative a bit and there's something that happens towards the third act as well and the way that's played out in a very unexpected fashion, if it actually played out in an expected fashion, you'd say, okay, well, that's, I get that. I saw that coming a mile away. There's something that you're going to see and you go, you're going to think, you're going to think to yourself, well, wow, they handled that in a real life manner. The way they handled that in the movie is the way most, most things shake down in our respective lives. Unfortunately, I'm really high on this movie. <laughs> and this is one of those movies that if I actually had the Blu-ray or DVD, I would continue to watch the final 10 minutes of the film. To Eric's point, Henry Thomas is very good in this movie in these little, I, I want a little bit more of him, but I, I might even just go back on my Blu-ray or DVD if I ever buy it and just watch his sequences, which are pretty funny. So there are some really good moments. So for me, I'm pretty high on this. I'm giving this movie four stars, four out of five stars for this wonderful, wonderful film, Sam and Kate. Eric Holmes, your rating. Yeah, I'm going to go three and a half on this one. I think if they could have got to the uh, to the end quicker, basically the first half is what I was what I was struggling with. But once it got into the uh, stuff that we didn't want to spoil, I think that's where the the movie started picking up for me. But as it is, I, I still like I liked where it ended up, and so I'll go three and a half. Yeah, um, for me it was a four, maybe with even room to grow with repeated viewings. Bruce, your rating on Sam and Kate. I'm right with you. I'm four stars on this, and I think. This is one of those movies that if you like really solid romance movies, and I can see this being a movie that really fits into the Christmas season too. Like it's not a Christmas movie, but yeah, it I feels like it feels like fall and it feels like family and it feels like like real relationships and just kind of I could see people kind of sinking into this when they're in that mood and really enjoying this movie. And to your point, there is a song in the film. We're just, might as well just say it right now. There's a song from Skylar Fisk. It's you can actually watch, listen to it right now on Spotify. I mean, look, support Skylar Fisk's music. The song is called "Life After." It's a really well done song. Whether or not you watch this movie, which is in theaters November 11th, or maybe when it down the road when it's hit streaming or D DVD or digital, check out "Life After" right now because it's so out right now. Yes, that that was actually her singing it. Then that's her singing it. That she that is a good that song. I, I I did like that song a lot. Yeah. She created that song specifically for the film. Yeah. And I believe I that uh, Henry Thomas created the song specifically for the <laughs> I think you're right. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so that is Sam, Sam and Kate. That is four stars for me and Bruce. Three and a half stars for Eric. Again, it's in theaters November 11th. If you Bruce, don't you remember those days in the early 80s, mid 80s, late 80s when relationship movies would actually be playing on a Friday and we or we could watch it on the weekends? These 
Woody Allen type <laughs> movies that would come yep. out and instead of streaming and I'm glad this movie is actually coming out in theaters and I I believe it's worth a watch on November 11th. I don't even know where this movie was shot. I really like the town they were into. I I have no idea. But uh yeah, Sam and Kate, well and when it hits digital and, and on demand, we're going to make sure that people know especially specifically when this film is coming out.